Hi, how you been? Hope things are good. How's the uh, wife and kids? Everybody's happy? That's good, that's good. So, where to start? Um, I've been pretty busy, and busy enough to where it's been kind of inconvenient to put a video together on some of the stuff, just because everything seems to be on a time crunch, time frame, something's gotta be done by a certain time. Or, you know, fighting weather or just a certain amount of available free time. But I have been busy and working on some stuff. So we're going to get back to working on this thing right here. Uh, there's a race coming up next weekend, so I figured uh, time to get going on getting that thing running. Um, I'm not sure what the last bike video was that I filmed. I think it was probably firing up this motor. It's all fresh. After the major cylinder head mishap and uh, kind of revamping everything and rebuilding it and reusing bearings. Because that's what we do. Um, now it's time. It had pump gas in it. And that's how it's been sitting. So it's been sitting for... Man, I don't know. I wrecked the motor in the Dodge at the beginning of March. So I probably had the bike running uh, January, February at some point. was the last time that it was actually fired up and running on pump gas. And... I just don't want to leave it with the methanol sitting if I'm not going to run it a lot. You can leave methanol sitting in a bike if you're, you're fired up once in a while. Or if you're racing frequently, it can sit. It's fine for a couple weeks here and there. No big deal. Um, but for long durations, I'll, I will put pump gas in and uh, let it sit, you know, circulate it. and The bike will run on pump. But now it's time to get that pump out of there, pump gas, uh, get methanol on it, in it. I don't want to put methanol on it. That'd make a mess of the paint, I think. But uh, we'll put some ethanol in it. We'll get her fired up. We'll heat cycle it a bunch. And I'd like to maybe take it for a little rip down the road and back just to try things out, make sure everything's good. Because um, the combo is 95% same as it was last year. Uh, there's different cams in it now. I don't know what's going to change much. The cams are pretty close to what it had. They're just a different set. Um, one of the cams in the previous head did take a little bit of abuse. So I used some other ones I had that were close. They're webs. They're, they're decent. Um, but yeah, I'd like to start getting this thing. I mean, it's it's literally only got like startup and idle time on it since it's been refreshed. So um, I'd like to heat cycle a little more. I'll probably do another oil change on it. There's a few little things I want to change. Um, nothing major. But we'll get into doing that. We'll, we'll be doing some bike stuff. So I'm going to show you where... Uh, where we left off with the Dodge quick because uh, some people have been asking about that and I just kind of stopped doing the truck videos because it just it was uh, it was just inconvenient honestly the uh, amount of work and time that went into uh, getting that thing back together and running made it real hard for me just a one man deal trying to, to film and do the work um, but it's back together and running and I've been spending a lot of time trying to learn HP tuners software which HP tuners and Dodge is like impossible feat learning a lot still not totally 100% sorted out but the truck does run and drive but uh, I wish I had the laptop out here I could show you a little bit of what the HP tuners is like for a Dodge uh, there's like there's like six tables to make it idle <laughs> it's crazy uh, the amount of settings and uh, well, getting too involved and boring you guys about tuning on a truck, but um, it very minimal of the tuning on that is based on like fuel tables. Everything is ignition and torque based and airflow, and that's taking some getting used to. But it's working, and we got a drivable truck. But the big kicker is I was doing some body work on it, so I'll go give you a little peek of what I got done and uh, where we're still going with it, and then we'll get back to working on the bike. So it's kind of a menagerie all around video of just kind of catching up on where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, I did manage to get myself a kidney stone. Uh, so I got that going for me. It's still hanging around. It's it's not leaving and it's not fun when it decides to have a little party. It's eight millimeters. It's not good. But we will show you a little bit of what the truck is like. So this is what I've been working on. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. I mean, never mind all the crap that's falling out of the trees here and sitting on it. It's pretty filthy right now. But the big thing is, uh, I did get new headlights for it, which is nice because the other ones were starting to get pretty rough looking. 
But I started doing body work and I did a big cutout on this side. This whole area in here, I cut that out and welded in a patch panel, or not a patch panel, a replacement panel. And it's all welded in metal now. There's a little skim coat of filler in there to smooth it out. So you gotta kind of sink the welds a little bit because you can't totally grind the weld off. And you don't wanna put a ton of heat in there with the grinding and everything. So you sink the welds in a little, a little skim coat of filler. And then we did some stone guard along the bottom edge. The whole back from that body line down is all chip guard. And then the bottom two inches all the way up is all chip guard. And then I did the inside of the doors. So the truck's got 330,000 miles on it at this point. So between working on the tune, driving it around, um, when I get sick of working on laptop stuff, I was starting on body work. So I got, I think, roughly two weeks of working after work and a couple weekends into doing all of the repair work on this side. On um, the bottom of the doors, the driver's door was pretty rough. I had to do a cutout and replacement right there. You can see there's a little ripple. Uh, I opted not to spend a bunch of time doing body work on that, but to just get the metal replaced, get it in there, because it does actually probably need a door in time. That bottom weld isn't awesome, not long for this world much more. Granted, it's not gonna see any winners anymore, so it could last for another five or six years, or it could look like shit in two months. Who knows? But from the, the body line down between the wheels is all new, redone, new paint, new clear, it all looks nice. The bed bedside turned out better than I could have hoped for not being a body guy. But yeah, I mean, between working on electronics, you know, electrical tuning business, between doing that and, you know, trying to get some bike stuff done, but this kind of took priority because I need this to be able to tow the trailer. And then the body work, it's just, it was time. That wheel lip lasted, you know, its whole life. It just started the blister and had one little hole. It's time to cut it out and replace it. Uh, tailgate, that's an Amazon tailgate, but that needs a little attention yet. Um, this side I started working on, as you can see, the chip guard is actually a different shade of white. So once I get going fixing this side, this doesn't need a cutout. This has just had some, some paint imperfections. Um, so we'll get this side, you know, sanded out, smoothed out, and I'll respray it. And when I respray it body color, the chip guard will get sprayed body color, so you won't see that as much. And then below the exhaust, you can probably see I chip guarded the bottom of that. Did not address the bottom of the doors yet. We're going to get the box side done first. And then we'll work on the bottom of the doors because those, these doors are actually the two best doors on the truck. Don't know why it worked like that, but they need minimal work. Just it's mostly just age and weathering and chips that we're going to fix on there. But then should be looking pretty decent. It's not a show truck, but it's got a blown six one and it's really fun and it makes neat noises. So that's where we're at with the truck. And like I said, there hasn't been a ton of interest in the truck on the channel here. So we'll get back to the bike stuff. If anybody's got questions on the truck, if you stumble in or you just happen to know me and know what this truck means to me, um, now I'll happy, happily uh, uh, answer questions or get into detail and stuff we're doing on this thing. But So I'll throw up a couple. I only got a couple pictures of what I was doing here for body work, but uh, for those that are interested, I'll throw up some pictures of how I cut that out and welded it. Um, no video, but just some stills, so I'm going to check those out probably now. For now, I'll work on that on the side and we'll get back to filming garage stuff in the bike. Never mind the lawn or never mind the lawnmower. I got new blades I gotta put on there. That's gonna be this afternoon's project. Got these guys here. Ooh, fancy. So here she is. I know it's been a long time. Welcome back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the return line off the regulator. I already got my batteries in here. Let's see. Batteries are down there. I did upgrade to XT90 connectors. I don't know if I ever showed that. Um, it's a better connector, a little lower resistance on those, and they, they fasten together real nice. So what I'm going to do is use the dash or the ECU, 
fire up the fuel pump and I'm going to take the return line and I'm going to dump it into that gas can and then that gas is going to go in that mower. It's just funny how that works. So we'll get going on that and then we'll go on to the next little step of getting her uh, race ready for her next weekend. Okay, you saw me just, uh, that cell was completely full. I turned the pump on, that's how badass that pump is, is that sucked that cell dry in like, whatever was that, what, 20 seconds? So that thing moves some fuel when it's not, you know, restricted. But now we're gonna fill her up with some M1 and then get her fired up. So we got her topped off with some M1. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the bike on and we're gonna circulate the pump. If you can see in there, probably not. Let's try this. 
How about with a flashlight? As you can see it's full right to the top. So now we will turn the bike on. It's going to prime. It goes like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my ECU here. I'm going to sneak my fat hand in here. Now we're going to go into the fuel pump. And I can test that output. So we're going to turn the fuel pump on and let it just prime out and kind of clean the system and run through the lines. It will be good. Okay, now we're gonna fire it up. I suppose uh, before I fire this up, I should probably put the methanol map in it. See, we have our files here. That's my only gas map I own. So we'll go to number three, I believe is my starter map. Now I notice this just switched back to alcohol scale. Go back to our dashboard. We got 14, 15 volts. Let's see if she starts. cleared out because it was getting pretty uh, pungent in here but uh, I heat cycled it like three times uh, fourth time was kind of short but <clears throat> just kept firing it up cool it off fire it up cool it off 
um, checking for leaks, just kind of going over everything. Uh, next thing on the agenda is we're going to address that tire. Uh, that tire was new uh, the end of last year. Started an event with it, and that's when I shit the motor. So that tire's only got like maybe four passes on it from testing, and yeah, we shit the motor and never made it, you know, into the race. So we're gonna condition that sucker up real quick, and then after the tire, we got what are we gonna do? We're gonna do spark plugs, and then fire it up one more time, get the oil warm, and then we're gonna dump the oil out of it and pull the pan off and just look for debris. Like I said, it's all. It's all fresh, so we're gonna look for you know anything that looks suspicious. But for now, let's get going on uh, getting that tire back in shape. I also got to uh, go ahead and get these batteries. I'm gonna cycle them and get them charged up, so we're ready to go. Cause probably go test at some point uh, during the week before the weekend gets here, and then we'll test on the weekend. But I can usually get through an entire weekend. Real, well, we'll see a long day of racing and. You know testing whatever on two batteries and i keep a third as a like a booster if something goes wrong and i get a voltage drop or one's kind of dying out so we're gonna go ahead and cycle them and get them charged up and then uh yeah those will be good to go So that's step one. Uh, so one more step to that. Tire will be good to go. I got my plugs out, gapped them already. So we'll go ahead and get that stuff apart there and do plugs on it. And we'll fire up one more time yet. So parts I was waiting on for my lawnmower showed up, so I obviously had to take a break and mow the yard. Can we just talk about how good this looks right now? Never mind those spots growing in from when I moved in. Look at that. It's like a park out here. All right, back to the garage. Okay, so tire is finished up. I'm going to wrap that and let her sit. <clears throat> we uh, still got to do oil change. I might save on that. It's starting to get late. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the plugs switched out. And then I didn't get a chance to charge the batteries yet because I was working on the lawnmower. So um, I think tomorrow we'll get the uh, batteries cycled, charged up, fire this thing up again, heat cycle it, and then we'll uh, we'll dump the oil. And that'll give me a chance to work on the uh, the fueling a little bit on the uh, startup issue where it was pulling a bunch of fuel out. I shouldn't even say issue. I just it was something that caught my eye. So there's obviously there's an adjustment I can make in there. But let's go ahead and get the plugs out for now. I got the plugs out darn on me while I'm in here. I might as well just do a compression test. So I'm going to unplug the fuel pump so that don't turn on. I'll turn the bike on, use one battery, just crank it over. And uh, we'll just get a reading on how the motor is doing so far, just being warmed up. Two 
240. I'm trying to let it go about, you know, I, I counted the 10, those 10 pulses I heard, just so I do all of them the same. on the dot again. I don't know if you can hear how fast it's cranking, but that's only on one battery. I usually run two. Two forty on the dot. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I still got the plugs out. I got my new plugs are sitting just over where I see the porcelain right there. Uh, so I'm going to put them in and then I think we're going to wrap it up for the night. Pushing on to nine o'clock, and uh, I think the neighbor's chickens are already in bed for the evening, and we don't need to be the reason they have bloody eggs. Because, funny story, the neighbor's chickens like to come on and hang out over in my yard, and they've been laying eggs in the, uh, the brush between the neighbor's yard and my house. So I went ahead and told the neighbor just to make sure he knew. Nothing was getting in and stealing the uh, chickens' eggs, or that the chickens weren't sick or something, that they weren't laying eggs. But, yeah, I got 22 eggs. He told me to go ahead and keep them. He's like, we have plenty of eggs over here if you want to keep those. Eggs over here if you want to keep those. So that's my funny neighbor chicken story. Kind of funny that they'll come over here while I'm working on stuff. <clears throat> Actually, they will come into my garage while I'm working, and they eat the uh, June bugs off the floor. So I go ahead and I let them do it. A few more bugs I got to clean up. And the more they eat, the more eggs they make, the more eggs I get. So if you guys ever want to just uh, hit me up and talk about chickens or eggs, go ahead. You know, bike stuff gets kind of old after a while. We're good. So I think we're about to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, there's still a few things I want to do that I didn't get to, but we'll do that in the next video. Um, I'm going to move the intake air temp, and I probably said it three times now, i still got to change the oil. Uh, I did get a compression test in, which I wasn't planning on doing, but it's been so long since I worked on this that it dawned on me that while I'm in there, I might as well. Oh, what else? Yeah, I think uh, i got to do some baseline shock setup on this yet. I remade a linkage down here. I don't know if I ever showed anybody, but that's a uh, a manufacturer's link that I bought that wasn't really, uh, uh, we'll say, geometrically great for my setup. And with this new shock, it was definitely not working together. So 
I kind of re-engineered some stuff here. You can see there's an extra hole. So I have four different options for mounting the shock to make it work right. So I can actually not have to change the springs and I can monkey with locations and it's actually pretty trick. But I got a baseline this thing now that we're all getting into race trim here. But yeah, I think that's about it for uh, for tonight. It's getting hot and humid out and I smell like a bag of assholes. But with that aside, speaking of bag of assholes, there's that state. <laughs> I won't even get started on the Illinois jokes. They do it themselves. Um, yeah, so hopefully this video doesn't seem too random. Uh, a lot of stuff to get caught up on. Like I said, I've been busy, but it's always something. It's not necessarily the bike. It's the truck. It's the lawnmower. It's the yard. It's the house whatever so uh fun stuff but <clears throat> racing season starts next weekend or i should say next week for you know it's time to get rolling on this thing and uh hopefully my junkyard motor fucking scrap together job i did on that thing stays together at least for this event uh, if it doesn't i guess we'll be making a whole lot more videos about putting a motor together but if it stays together cool we did that thing on a budget um yeah, still my girl. So it's been a long time, but it's time to get back to making some videos about motorcycle stuff. I do have a whole list on my board back here, that right there. I got a list of stuff I want to make and change on this yet, aside from getting it ready for this race. Um, stuff that I want to do, you know, throughout the summer. Uh, some heavy fab stuff, so that'll be time consuming, but you know how it goes. So we do here, one man band. I got help. But uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. Next video, hopefully, we'll either be at the track or we'll be doing some uh, random buttoning up, small, loose end stuff. So thanks for bearing with me over this long vacation I took. And uh, see you on the next one.